Thanks for staying tuned. Uh, of course, it's still the Thursday morning conversation on Rise and Shine. Whilst we're held brief to have our security conversation this morning, we have um, Otwekan Franklin, Director of Crown in Aquabum State, joining us this morning, of course. Um, we had earlier aired the video where he took uh, on the sport assessment of the road situation in Aquabum. And we'll just get him, you know, to talk hands-on on his experience um, with regards to certain road activities, you know, state of the roads in certain parts um, of the state this morning. Good morning, Otwekan Franklin. Good to have you on the show this morning. Good morning, we are good to be with you, and um, I think you are doing very well. I just followed your um, brief, and I'm so excited that you, you know, you could highlight a lot of issues informing the public, keeping us abreast with development in the country. Mm. Well done, kudos to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate. Um, so we, we we already took the video where you know you had the on the spot assessment of the Udoite Ikpa road access. Um, so I'll just ask what what exactly is going on and why this is also a concern is the fact that the governor is actually um, commissioning several road projects around the state at this time. And there was a, a scenario that I painted earlier with regards to the state of that road. Sometimes the agencies that need to be getting the job done wait until the governor becomes personally aware of the situations of those roads, maybe by some stroke of luck, maybe for some reason he passed that road or the news just got to him without passing through you know, the sieve of his um, PAs and all of that. Uh, how long will it take before we expect the response of the state government, as it were? Well, I, I must commend the um, governor of Akwaibum State, Pastor Omoino. Um, yesterday, he commissioned 10.5 kilometer road in Parene, that is my local government area, and had also awarded contract for the construction of uh, um, what we call 42 to Ikora Paden Road, and also other internal roads within Pareni, as well as, you know, uh, or, or, uh, doing some road construction, completing some road project that was, you know, um, initiated by the predecessor. Here, he is doing pretty well in this regard. Yesterday, we had to respond. When I mean we, now I mean the Center for Human Rights and Accountability Network. Um, being one of the foremost human rights group and a pro-democracy group that believe in holding government accountable and ensuring that we deepen democracy in Nigeria had to respond to the agitations and lamentations of the people of Akwaibom states and particularly those who are resident within Ikpa Road that is the host of the Federal University of Uyo, mm. Udoite Road, um, Itu Road, and of course, Tabernacle Road and Nelson Mandela, all these axes are the, 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 the suburb of where you have the, the university community, if you want to put it that way. Students, staff of the university, and you know, people who are doing businesses all live around that area. They have been that complaint that the road has been cut off. Part of why the road is cut off is because the state government had to close the Calabari to highway because of the, the, the project going on along the Tabaraku Road. So the Calabar to Highway had been you know, closed. So, so vehicles coming from Calabar, the trucks bringing in lateral, bringing in shipping stamp from Akampa in Cross River State, would not, would not more pass through the Calabar to Highway. Would they would not do a detour to pass through either the Uyo Village Road or they pass through the Ekpa Road axis, passing through the two road to enter Ekpa Road or they pass through um, Udoite Road. So these are now the 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 road, the road that, that now links them to town because the highway is you know closed. Now that uh, development for, for the past six months that the Calabari to Highway, that is the um, axis of the Calabari to Highway, was closed, had left this internal road to become deplorable because vehicles going to Calabar. We now have to either pass through the Uyo Village Road, or pass through the Ekpa Road Axis, or pass through Itu Road, or pass through Mudo um, So that is why you now have the road becoming completely cut off. So yesterday we had to respond to the lamentations and cries of the people of the area, the road users, the motorists, the students, the university community. 
complain a lot. The hardship, the economic activity is, you know, completely candid. Nothing is happening in that area again. If you go there now, you cannot even have a way to, to go through. So in our response, we had to actually went to find out what has happened. That is where I now got to know the actual cause of the, um, the failure of the road, the, the, the road, that it is because the Federal Highway, the Calabaito Highway, has been blocked. Now, the governor has directed that the Uyo Village Road linking the Parax Road should be, you know, constructed and dualized to, you know, to make it a dual carriage way. This is excellent. Yesterday, our team went there. We did not see anything on ground. We believe that the moment a government award contract, what should follow should be action because this project is meant to serve the people. If, you, if the government award a contract and for three, four, five weeks, nothing happens, it means something is wrong. So yesterday we had to take a tour to actually find out what is actually happening to the Calabai, to the, to the Uyo village road. And we saw that the contractor was yet to mobilize the site. He was yet to mobilize the site. Okay. We did not see any sign. Nothing, nothing apart from the fact that, apart from the fact that the, the um, um, refuse had been hit on the road. Refuse, that, that is also the official dump site of refuse. Refuse have been hit on the road. The road has been cut off. Heavy duty trucks that are going to Calabar are still finding their way through. And for smaller vehicles cannot go through that access because the road is completely cut off for motorists. So that is where we are today. So those who are living, who are do, living or doing business within the CCCC, CCECC junction, um, the access that takes you to your own station, takes you to Ibiaku, uh, Urwan, takes you to Calabai to a highway, takes you to Epa Road, to uh, Uroite Road, and to Itu Road. All those axes have been completely cut off and they are locked down. So anybody that lives in that area, where you manage to come out, your going back is at the mercy of God. And that also caused, that also put a lot of security threats. Because when you don't have security men able to patrol that area, you leave the area and the people of the area, you know, to defend, to, to their faith. So you will hear of incidents of robbery, incidents of uh, court activities, because that is student-dominated environment. Mm. So what we did yesterday was to draw attention of the governor, perhaps he may not be aware of this development, that this is what is happening, that he needs to immediately direct the commissioner for works and the agency that maintains roads. Now you see, that is the Akurima Akwebo Road, Road Maintenance Agency. You see, it is cheaper and cost effective to repair this road as they are. Very little potholes, very little um, 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 dishes. But when it becomes completely failed, it will consume so much money. So yeah. the government doesn't need to wait until the road becomes completely failed. Then you'll not be sinking in billions. But as it stands now, it could easily be handled because the failed the fail part is not too deep, it's not too wide, it's not up to a kilometer, it's not up to 500 meters that it could easily be addressed. That is why we think that if the government is prompt, if the government is proactive, they could arrest that situation now and put the area back to um, its uh, former state and proper use by the community and the people of the, people of the area. Okay. Uh, um, let, let me say hello to uh, our security experts who's been able to join us. We're having a conversation with him in a moment. We have um, Dr. Yahuza Getso joining us this morning, of course, a reputable um, security mm -hmm. expert, where, which we'll be having um, these security conversations with. Good morning, um, Dr. Getso. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, team. Good to have you on Rise and Shine. I'll, I'll, I'll join you in a moment. Let me just wrap up with um, Otsuekon Franklin. Um, uh, Grand Director, one of the issues no that we see as a result of some of um, these activities is that 
Aquabo might are clamoring that some of the commissioners in the cabinet of, you know, um, Governor Pastor Moino need to be laid off. I mean, 90% um, of them were inherited from the Domi Mano led administration. Do you think that his commissioners are working in tandem with his Arise Agenda vision? And are you also, um, you know, do, do you also play to the sentiments or the the thoughts, rather, that, you know, some of these, that he should rejig his cabinet with regards to the commissioners. The truth is, the governor inherited or reappointed all these commissioners from his predecessor. My take before the governor was sworn in was that he need to um, form his own team People who will actually, you know, align with his agenda. People who will come with fresh ideas. People who will come with fresh innovation and will add value to his government. But because he has the right to hire and fire, he has so decided to, uh, to appoint these persons that are there. But truth is that these people currently, because he, the governor, came out in a public function to announce that he will soon... Um, dissolve or reshuffle his cabinet. That statement by the governor had actually affected the psyche, affected the, 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 the effectiveness of his ESCO members because they don't know when this will happen. They are just waiting for the governor to say, I have dissolved my ESCO or I am reshuffling my ESCO. So they are like people, they are like criminals who have been condemned, who are on a death roll, waiting for the hangman to come and knock at your, you know, cell and bring you out and hang you on the, you know, and hang you on the gallop. I just what is happening to the zone. I have said before that these commissioners, assistants today, are like people who are on a dead roll. They are just waiting for the hangman to hang them on the, you know, uh, to hang them on the on the gallop. So they are not adding any much value, if you ask me. They are instead working in. Um, working in a, 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 in, 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 in a revise, they are working in, in counter, de counter uh, 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 development. What they are doing is not contributing positively to what they are supposed to do, to the dream of the governor. I'm not telling the governor to dissolve his ESCO. I'm not telling him to also sack anyone. But I'm saying by now, he ought to have known mm. that he has not achieved much that he should have achieved because of the fact that people who are in his cabinet are not add, adding enough value. He needs to reject the cabinet and put fresh ideas, bring in fresh brains, bring in people who have the zeal and passion. And don't forget that these people who are there, so, some of them have been there since the days of the Urban Hotel government. They have been there since the days of Apadio's government. They have been there since the days of Udom's government. So they have gotten enough wealth. They are, in fact, themselves wealthier than even the government. So they feel that they are just doing the government a favor to serve. They're not, the, the zeal, the passion, the love for the city is no more there because they have made enough resources, enough wealth, so they just feel sluggish. If you go to the ministry today, you see that the ministry is always vacant, always empty. You will see the commissioners in, on their seat. Okay. They don't report to work. They are in their homes, they, they, they stay in their homes, and behave as if they are even the governor, even the governor themselves. That is the way they behave. So the governor needs to get people who will be loyal to him, who will be, who will be, who will pay obedience to him, and work in line with his arise agenda in order for him to achieve his dream. Like I said before, it is up to him to decide whether to reject his cabinet, cabinet whether to sack anyone. The honors lies on the table. He has the scorecard of all of them. Okay. He can appraise them and know what to do going forward. Okay. All right, then. And I, I also do hope that civil society organizations such as yours, who also offer an eye to the activities of government, would help to, you know, put these kinds of concerns of the citizens forward. But thank you so much, um, Otoekon Franklin, Director of Crown in Akwabem State, for all the good work that you do um, for the people of the state as a civil society organization. Thank you for your time on the show this morning. My pleasure, always. Thank you so much. For thank you very me. much.